Welcome everyone. So we define a so-called trade surplus when exports in an economy are more than the imports in that economy. A trade deficit we define as the opposite, namely when the exports in that economy are actually less than the imports in that economy. Now, what we generally observe is that when in an economy the domestic savings are more than the domestic investments, that typically that economy will end up with a trade surplus. And we also observe often that when the savings are less than the domestic investments in that economy, that that economy has a trade deficit. Now, most economic textbooks, they stop at that point. But I'm going to explain to you basically the mechanism as a one why is this the case? Why is this that what you see over here actually leads to what you see over here? Now, there are multiple mechanisms. I'm just going to explain one of them, but that one hopefully will clarify things for you. Now, imagine the following. Suppose that in the US, indeed, the savings are actually less than the investment. So the domestic savings are less than the domestic investments. In other words, in the US, some of the domestic investments cannot be funded with the domestic savings. There is basically a shortage of capital to fund all those investments. Now, that shortage of capital won't come you know, falling from the sky, so it has to come from somewhere. It could come from abroad, eh? especially if you have an attractive interest rate that will attract foreign uh, investors. It could come from abroad. It could come, for instance, from Japan. It doesn't have to come from Japan, but just as an example. Now, imagine the following. Suppose that Japanese investors decide to basically fund the shortage of capital in the US. And again, they fund it and they get a nice reward for it in, in terms of an interest rate or whatever. Um, but if they want to fund it, they have to take into consideration that in Japan, they use the Japanese yen and in the US, those investments, they must be, you know, they, they have to occur with uh, using the US dollar. So when this huge influx of capital from Japan goes in the US, you basically have Japanese that are converting their Japanese yen to US dollar. As such, the demand for the US dollar will go up, which will make the US dollar obviously a lot stronger. Okay, so it will make it a lot stronger relative to the Japanese yen. Of course, we keep all other factors constant. Otherwise, the model would be completely polluted. Now, what I want you to think about is this. When you have a US dollar that is stronger and, you know, by comparison, the Japanese yen will become weaker, what does this do to your import-export status? Well, the US with a strong US dollar can import easily and exports become harder. In other words, it will most likely run a trade deficit. Okay, so in other words, it will most likely run a trade deficit, which brings us back to where we started. Eh? So when we have a situation where domestic savings cannot cover domestic investments, and you end up with this trade deficit, yes, of course, you know, you can look at the uh, all kinds of formulas, etc. But the mechanism that underlies it uh, looks a little bit like this. Remember, there are multiple mechanisms out there. I just explained to you one, but hopefully it clarifies why this actually occurs.